you know, it's seldom, it's rare that I actually cross over from just music into something aside from it, such as movies, films, television shows. Obviously, pop culture and I are two things that are, at most cases and at most times, at odds with one another. But for some strange reason, the sociological brain of mine just continues to punish itself, longing to know more about why the world works and the world kind of functions the way in which it does. One thing that has really been in the popular mouth of Joe and Jill American is Miley Cyrus over the past, you know, month and a half or so. It's been because of her controversial performance at the Video Music Awards and the subsequent music videos for the first two singles off of her new album entitled Bangers. Now, for those of you who remember Miley Cyrus, you probably don't know one of the very first roles that she was ever in, and that was in a Tim Burton movie called Big Fish. Believe me, I only mention this because, hell, I didn't even freaking know until I read the wiki article, and I was shocked. I was surprised. I couldn't believe it. A movie that I really was kind of, you know, I've always really loved starred somebody that right now kind of makes me wonder what the hell's going on. But it really, we, the one thing that we need to really understand, the one thing that we need to ask ourselves, what really is the problem here? Is the problem Miley Cyrus, or is the problem the people that she's been around basically ever since she was a toddler? And that's right, I'm talking about her father, Billy Ray Cyrus, I'm talking about the Disney multiverse, and I'm talking about just the overall strife of being a pop princess and trying to shed an image. Because that's exactly what's going on here. It's been a couple of years since her popular role in the television show Hannah Montana has come to an end. And it really seemed like right at the end of uh, the end point of that show and directly afterwards, she was immediately trying to shed the image of the Disney universe that she had had for so long and basically had heralded to the T. It's one that had brought her a lot of money, a lot of fame, and basically jettisoned her into the households and into the mouths of Americans and people all over the world. Because of this, we have seen here in 2013 probably one of the largest attempts to distance themselves uh, as far as these actors and actresses are concerned, especially the actresses, one of the biggest attempts to try to distance themselves from their former lives probably uh, that we have ever seen. Remember back in the day whenever Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears were both trying to, you know, shed their image a little bit and they were all in popular culture and stuff like that? They were former Mouseketeers. Yeah, both of them were. And, well... Brittany didn't go very well, considering she got pregnant, had a marriage that lasted a matter of days or hours, shaved her head, and basically went crazy. Now, if you Google Britney Spears, you might get a new music video or a, a new song, but you're also going to get at least 15 shots of a very disheveled-looking Britney uh, kind of exposing her camel toe. Oh, God. Cover Killer Nation said camel toe. It's so funny. Justin Timberlake has done a lot better for himself, aside from the whole Super Bowl Janet Jackson fiasco. But here in 2013, we've seen two key events that have definitely shown that whenever kids grow up from their positions on a Disney television show, that basically they just look to distance themselves so far from that image that it's impossible to ignore. And it's almost as though this is done strategically. Before we consider Miley Cyrus, let's first take a look at Selena Gomez. Let's take a look at uh, Vanessa Hudgens. Let's take a look at basically the entire cast of Spring Breakers, which in some way, shape, or form had some sort of uh, feigned team stardom, uh, teen stardom. Spring Breakers as a movie is just appalling, and it's not appalling because of the content. It's mainly appalling because it's written poorly. Uh, the shooting of it is just ridiculous. The idea behind it uh, you would think would actually be pretty good, but it was executed terribly. The plot is just really repetitive and just kind of over-excessive, over-indulgent. This is a film where the four girls who are trying to distance themselves from Din Disney did so, so much that Disney wouldn't even touch it. And there's no reason for them to. In fact, if anything, Disney was probably laughing at them for this narrow-minded attempt because this is a movie that did not shift units. This is a movie that may have changed a couple of opinions, but overall... So many damn people didn't even see the movie, or so many people read what was happening in the movie prior to taking their children to see it that there weren't very many people that were surprised. Sex, drugs, booze, ridiculosity, the stupidity of spring break. If this was to achieve anything, it was to show parents that they should never allow their daughters to go on spring break, they should force them to come home, and bury their nose in a book. Now let's get to Miley. 
Miley has been more of a train wreck than these other individuals, principally because of the way in which her actions have kind of been dis uh, dictated, and the way her actions have probably been taken into the wrong context. People will complain because she sh sort of, you know, shifted up her hairstyle. They complain because of a birthday cake that she had a couple of years ago, and now they're, of course, complaining because she twerked on national television at the VMAs. Her... New single, Wrecking Ball, which crushed records for one week uh, viewing, uh, has her basically naked on a, you know, wrecking ball, literally. Uh, and basically, she's become a laughingstock, or so you would think. I say that because, even though a lot of people are wondering what's wrong with her, the appeal is there. The name is there. Everything is there. One thing that I've been doing for the past couple of days, since the release of Bangers on Tuesday quite frequently, in fact, is selling the album. The one thing that happened after the whole Robin Thicke, Miley Cyrus controversy that I was doing a lot of was selling the single, or selling Robin Thicke's album. It's funny how this works. It's funny how whenever you distance yourself from a schoolgirl image, it's funny how you distance yourself and try to make yourself more adult, more grown up, more provocative. Whenever you do things that push the boundaries, whenever you do things that essentially get people talking, regardless to whether or not the talk is positive or negative, we here in America, and probably abroad in 2013, always want to know more. We always want to hear more. Now you would think, logically, that the reason why this album was purchased at all times was because they listened to the single purely for the music, and enjoyed the music, so they wanted to own the music. But I can guarantee you this, given the number of people that have picked up this album, and given the people who have bought it that definitely don't seem like they would traditionally be Miley Cyrus fans, uh, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't compute. This doesn't add up. This is all based around the hype factor. Now what is it really that Disney does that really causes all of these individuals to want to break away from this structure? Well, for one, I, I have a couple of theories. Uh, Disney's shows are so squeaky clean and have such a clear-cut image and everything like that that you would think that there would be absolutely no reason for them to want to do that aside from the fact that they wanted to get away from that image, that they really wanted to project themselves as a grown-up individual that actually has the potential and the possibility of, you know, smoking a cigarette or perhaps accidentally taking a hit from a joint or drinking an alcoholic beverage or whatever it may be. But in reality, I think that there's a little bit of an opposition going on there. I really actually think that there's more going on on these sets than meets the eye, that there's actually more drugs on there that meets the eye, that basically they do everything in their power to get as much as they can out of these young individuals, no matter what the cost is, no matter what it takes. It's kind of a backwards principle. It's kind of a backwards philosophy. However, it works. It sells. And don't even get me started on how I could make Disney even richer, because I know how to do it. It's crazy. It's stupid. They would laugh at me, but it would work. Miley Cyrus, while on the set, admitted that there was a lot of craziness that went on. Take a look at what happened with her father. Her father now is doing work, by the way, with Limp Biscuit, or at least was on stage with Limp Biscuit. Can you imagine the, the outcome of that collaboration? Let's combine things for a moment. Let's combine hit singles and you get achy, breaky stuff. Let's combine the name of a studio album and the name of a DVD and you get Some Gave Poop or Poop Gave All. Oh no, Cover Killer Nation said the word poop. How unprofessional. It's the truth. It's what they're titled. Billy Ray Cyrus got himself into a lot, a lot, a lot of drug problems. And just imagine, Miley was his little cash cow. It's kind of a wrong thing to say, considering she doesn't have any sort of weight problem, but he was, or she was his cash cow. His career lived on basically through his daughter. Because after Achy Breaky Heart, he didn't have a career, but he did have a daughter. It's hard to tell what exactly people are seeing in this. It's hard also for me to understand why people make such a great hype over something that's basically just kind of shifting the boundaries a little bit and pushing the boundaries a little bit, just like Madonna had done in the 1980s. If you want to know my opinion on Madonna, check out the fan edition of the 10 worst artists currently still making music. I'll make it real abundantly clear. This shouldn't surprise us very much, considering this is how you have to make an impact in today's society. Sex sells, and everybody's buying. It's been that way for a while now, and it's only gotten more lewd and more ridiculous. And that's basically how you've had to do it. In order to make your mark, especially as a female, you've had to push the boundaries to the point of pure exposure. And whenever that becomes the reality, whenever that becomes the new thing, whenever exposure itself is just all that it is, and we've already had our taste of that with Robin Thicke's music video for Blurred Lines, 
Well then, what's left after that? Does human sexuality get any more lewd and lascivious than pure exposure? I guess it really could, considering what can happen whenever pure exposure is, you know, exposed. But who's going to be the person that's going to take it to that level? Is it going to be Miley? Probably not. This whole image thing, this is a phase. This is something that will last a little while until people don't buy into it anymore. And then she'll go through another stage. She'll go to a more professional stage. Timberlake on his last album, Future Sex Love Songs, was still very suit and tie, but at the same time, talked a little dirty. Same thing happened on the 2020 Experience Part 2, but on Part 1, very primp and proper, very Michael Jackson. And remember, also, that Michael Jackson, the same individual that perhaps perpetuated this whole idea of never having a childhood and basically having to live your adult life without one, well, we all know what happened to him. He was a strange guy, and he got in trouble multiple times over many different things. Still make good music, don't get me wrong, but still, these types of things, they do affect. So the real question is, why does it continue? And I guess the real question that would be asked to us for asking that question from companies like Disney, Nickelodeon, etc. is, why not? They're still making us money. That's all that it is. That's the driving factor. It's nothing new. I'm not presenting you with any information that you did not know previously in saying that this is constantly and has always been driven by the almighty dollar. If you're so appalled by it, don't give in to it. Don't be appalled by it and then buy it and basically buy into it. If you're appalled by it, just say no. Might not make the problem go away. In fact, it probably won't because plenty of other people will buy into it. We're a fairly stupid society. But don't be a part of it. If you really are interested and really want to know, then don't be appalled or claim that you're appalled. The only way this trend is going to be bucked is if there is a societal change. And since I don't see that happening anytime soon, we might as well just strap in, enjoy the ride, and live with it. Because it ain't going anywhere.